Hello, creative photographers. I'm Haley from Creative Photo Folk, welcoming you to another trick photography and photo editing tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you a Photoshop technique that seems to have become quite popular recently, orbs. This orb technique is really simple and creates a fun little distortion of regular photos. So this can be a little bit of trial and error to find photos that work. Generally for this technique, I use pictures of flowers or other macro items. The one thing I found that didn't really work is when you have something like this. I don't really like how you've got the black space. So I found that images that didn't fill the frame, like say you were shooting a flower and you could see a bit of the sky, that didn't necessarily work for me. I liked the ones that where the subject was fully in the frame, taking up the whole frame. So to show you what the initial image of that looked like, so you can see that it was a flower and it had a black background. So that black background is what's causing the issue for me, but you may like that. So totally up to you. So the example I'm going to show you is this one here and it looked like this initially. So I just basically um, used the photos that were sitting on my hard drive at the time and I was just doing a little bit of a water drop um, situation with some flowers and this is what it ended up looking like. So let's create this together. So to bring this over into Photoshop, I'll just go to Photo, Edit In, Edit In Adobe Photoshop. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just unlock this background. Um, to do that, I just clicked this little lock here and that turns it from a background layer into a regular layer. You'll see that the name changed to layer zero. And then I'm going to press Control or Command J just to make a copy of that. So just so that we can have an easy reference if, in case we wanna muck around some other way. So the next thing you'll need to do is change the image size. We need it to be a square. So the first thing we'll do is go to image, image size and we basically want these two sizes to match so if i were to type 12.8 you'll see that that one changed so we don't want that so what i'll do is unlink them by hitting this little lock here and now if i type 12.8 it changes them um, so they're not linked so by doing that that will now make this image a square so i just picked the smallest size i had and matched them you could match it to the larger size it doesn't really matter I will just hit OK, and that just smushes your image into a square. Now we need to go to Filter, then Distort, and then Polar Coordinates. And in here, we want to choose the bottom one, Polar to Rectangular, and you can actually just zoom out and see what that will look like. It just makes it look a little bit funky. So that is that. Next, we need to flip it up the other way, and this is just so when we do our final move, everything is in the right position. So to do that, we'll go to Edit, Transform, and then Flip Vertical. And once again, we will go to Filter, Distort, Polar Coordinates. And this time, we will choose the opposite one. So we'll go to Rectangular to Polar. And if you zoom out, you'll see that gives us the result we're looking for. So I'll just hit OK. And that is the orb effect created. However, as you would have seen in the initial, this little flower was more towards the top. So all I did then was press Control or Command T to bring up my um, transform tool and I just rotated it around so that that flower's at the top. And that's how I got my final result. Now you can continue to play with this. You could put on some adjustment layers to play with the brightness or the contrast or the colors. You could also add some textures just to give it a nice fine art feel. But I kind of stopped there in this case. So let me show you some others I've created. So this one is created out of water drops on CDs, which is another tutorial from my channel, but basically the original look like this. And that's how it ended up. This one is quite cool. Um, and again, it was from that water drop shoot that I showed you earlier, but this is what the initial photo looked like. So you can see that the stand that I put the water drops on has become quite distorted and it looks quite cool. This one is just created from some little flowers that I found on one of my plants. So that is the final result and it initially looked like this. So because this background isn't too contrasty and it actually does flow quite nicely with the pink of the flowers, then that actually did work, unlike the sky or the black that I showed you earlier. This one I rather like and it initially looked like this. 
So you can see that it does take some experimenting to get results that you like. So this is quite a different one and I actually shot this one here. So basically what I did is put a flower on a lit light box and then I had ripped off some petals that I'd laid around the scene for a totally different um, creative concept that I was working on. But as I said, it was just on my hard drive. I thought I'd give it a shot and that's what that ends up looking like. So I do actually really like that. This one here, I thought I'd give a go. If you look really closely, you can see there's a bee here that's been really stretched out of proportion. Um, so that's what this one initially looked like. Who would have known that that bee would end up looking like that? Again, this is why you've just got to try these things. This one I think is really fun. I love the layering and the symmetry of it and it initially looked like this. So what it is is a pineapple that is growing inside a plant. So these are the leaves and this is the pineapple starting to form. It hasn't gone yellow yet and yeah I think that one ended up really cool. This one here is actually a rose that I froze and that's from a tutorial that I teach inside my course Photo Fanatics. But uh, this is how it ended up and I both love and hate this. I love the shape of it and I love the colours but it just looks a little bit gross. I think that frozenness has made it look a bit very visceral. So I'm not too sure how I feel about this one but I do really like the colours. And then finally this one is really cool and totally you just would not see this coming. So again this is just from my water drops on CDs tutorial that I'll link in the description and who would have guessed that that's how that would end up looking. And I like that because it doesn't even have the full orb shape. Although it does if you look really closely, but it just sort of looks cool and distorted. So really worth experimenting with lots of different images just to see what you can create and what you like and what you don't. Now to speed up this process, you can make an action. However, if your first step is squishing it into a square and then you use a portrait image, not a landscape one, then you are going to come into some issues. So if you do decide to create an action, just do that step manually first, squishing it into a square, and then you can run your action to do the filter process. So to record an action, you'd go to this little arrow here. You would hit the plus down the bottom, give your action a name, and then hit record. And then it will just record every action that you do afterwards. So that's when you would go to filter, distort, polar coordinates, make sure that you choose polar to rectangular. Then you would go to edit, transform, flip vertical, then you would go to filter again, distort, polar coordinates, make sure you hit this one, hit OK. Look at that, it's like a reverse one, it's put it back to its original state but it's still as an orb. And then you would go in and stop your action. So then you could just run that action for every image that you have, making sure that you resize it first. Now this is the same technique that is used to create little planets, although little planets have their own idiosyncrasies and I teach all of that inside my course Photo Fanatics. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this simple technique and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Be sure to subscribe. See ya.